Number 24. If you use an idea pulley of the type shown in figure 9.25a to support a car engine of mass 115 kilograms, letter A, what would be the tension in the rope? All right, so here's our picture. Um, here is our mass. This thing right here told us weighs 115 kilograms. And therefore, if that has a mass, it's experiencing a force due to gravity, and that would be pointing directly downward. Okay. Now, in order to support, as it says in the question over here, in order to support a car engine, we know this problem is in equilibrium, aka static equilibrium, and therefore the sum of all the forces should equal zero. So I know that this particular weight of the object has to be balanced. You know, this force vector has to be balanced by something. All right. Now, um, which, for, which other vectors in this problem Right, they gave us these. Which other vectors on in this problem are supporting uh, the mass? Well, since the mass is stationary, we know that, again, the sum of all the forces have to equal zero. And therefore, when I add up these two tensions, they should equal the force, oops, the force uh, due to gravity on the object. Okay, uh, this piece up here is irrelevant for this part of the problem because the car is uh, motion, uh, excuse me, the car, the... Uh, well, yeah, it's a car engine, sorry. Because the, uh, that'd be actually pretty crazy, right? Hook up a car to this thing and then pull it. Um, the car's engine is going to be stationary. And therefore, in terms of my free body diagram, I could write this, that the vector pointing downward, right, is the weight of the object. And then, I'm sorry if you hear humming in the background. I don't, uh, you know, my neighbor's landscapers are out at 7 a.m. So, uh, please pardon the noise, uh, the joys of suburbia. And now... Uh, the force vector, uh, there are two essentially. I could draw now two arrows pointing up, okay? Or I could just detail one here and call that 2t, all right? Which I, that's what I will do. So this 2t represent, the, the 2t over here will represent uh, these uh, two t's over here. So basically now, uh, putting these vectors into my formula here, I would have now 2t, oops, 2t, minus w is equal to zero, 2t is then equal to w, t is then equal to w over two, t is then equal to mg over two. Okay, this is the general formula. Now I can generalize this even more, all right, where I can substitute out this two and plug in a variable for that, and I could write something like this. So t is equal to mg over the mechanical advantage, okay? Now this is the general formula that you, it would be good to know. And the mechanical advantage here, I mean, they told us in the problem that it's two, but it will equal the number of uh, essentially tensions or vectors that represent the tension that oppose the weight vector. So if the weight's pulling down, okay, however many vectors there are pointing upward will equal the mechanical advantage, all right? So if you had three of them, you know, another rope in here, I mean, it's part of the same rope, but another piece that's pointing upward, you would have then three arrows pointing up and your mechanical advantage would have been three. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Um, so now for this problem, uh, all we have to do is plug in now the value. So the tension will be equal to the mass of the engine, which is 115 uh, kilograms multiplied by gravity of 9.8, all divided then by the mechanical advantage, which was two as we found. And now we can simply solve this thing. So let's plug it into the handy dandy calculator, 115 times 9.8 divided by two, and we get a value considering sig figs and rounding, 564 uh, newtons. Okay, so that takes care of letter A. Let's move on now to letter B. Uh, so what force must the ceiling supply, assuming you pull straight down on the rope, neglect the system's mass? All right, so now for letter B, we are pulling uh, at this particular location and we're pulling straight down, okay? Now, whatever force is being, you know, supplied downward essentially, right, will have to then um, equal the force that's pulling up. Does that make sense, right? It, I mean, if, if we, we can't get essentially anything for free here, so whatever, you know, I'm assuming by the way that there's no acceleration. It doesn't tell me that there isn't any, but it also doesn't tell me that there is. And therefore, I have to assume the simplest assumption, which is that there is none. Because if there is an acceleration, well, what's the number, right? We can make up any number we want. So I have to assume that there's none. 
So basically, um, the you know as as we pull as the system as this weight. Uh, let me highlight the weight down here. As this weight moves upward, okay, that will equal then the force that is on the ceiling here, okay, being pulled down, right? If you were to think about this, just pretend the system is at rest, actually, because it's basically the same thing. It's moving at constant velocity. Remember the sum of the excuse me, the sum of the forces have to equal zero. So therefore, if this, you know, force here is 115 times 9.8, what is that pulling down on essentially? Well, it's pulling down on the ceiling part here, right? I mean, just think about that. If the system is at rest and you put a weight here, isn't it, wouldn't it be pulling the same amount here on the ceiling, right? You could think about it if the connection were really weak, it might break. So you know that there's a force up here. It just depends on what it's equal to, right? That force is going to oppose the weight of the object. So therefore, when I, I can draw like a free body diagram at this particular location up here, and I'll do it over here on the side, we would have then the weight of the object pulling down. Again, that's just W. Okay, that would be pulling straight down. And then there would be a force that the ceiling is applying pulling upward. We'll call that FC. Right, so right here, this we, we would have now FC. And as you can see, these will be balanced. Okay, So I could have now FC, force of the ceiling, minus the weight should equal zero. So the force of the ceiling should equal the weight. So the force of the ceiling should equal mg. And that's it. Now all we have to do is start plugging in values. So the force, is, force of the ceiling is equal to 115 times 9.8. So the force that the ceiling is exhibiting uh, will be 115 times 9.8. And it's essentially then double the value that we found over here. Okay. Uh, so this works out considering sig figs 1130. It's 1130 newtons. All right. So hopefully that helps. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. Definitely helps the channel out uh, a lot. And uh, look forward to helping you in the next question. Take care.